was there for Aaron Boone's home run in 2003 against the Red Sox. I was there when Aaron Boone hit the walk-off home run against the Red Sox. I was there when Aaron Boone sent the Yankees to the World Series. I was there for Game 7 against the Red Sox in 2003. I was there in 2003 when we faced the Boston Red Sox for a, a, a game that was going to determine who went to the World Series. I was there. I watched Aaron Boone hit a walk-off against Tim Wakefield. Doesn't get any better than that. I was there on October 16, 2003 for what was the biggest home run of my life. This Red Sox-Yankee teams were, I think, obviously clearly the two best teams in the American League. It was just a, an incredible year, incredible season. The fight with that particular team was, was nothing I could describe. It's the first time I really thought momentum in baseball was out the window. Each time you thought, man, we got a big win, the other team would come back and knock the other down the next day. That was a very intense game, or, and actually the series, for that matter. I've never been to a seventh game at all in all my playoff time. Lots of tension going into that game. Truly a heavyweight fight. Extra innings with the Red Sox, do or die, winner take all. You talk about a grindy game, a crazy game, that was Aaron Boone's game. Well, that night got off to such a tough start for us with Pedro really dealing. It was a, a night that didn't start out real well for us. There was a time I felt like in the middle innings where Pedro was cruising. They got ran out to like a 4 nothing, and then a 5-1 or 5-2 lead. It didn't look very good, but then all of a sudden you, you got the feeling that Pedro was beginning to tire a little bit. They'd made a huge mistake, I think, uh, earlier. They left Pedro Martinez in. But that was the year the Red Sox didn't have the conventional closer, so their bullpen was a little different. We started to have some better at-bats against them. Before you know it, we string those hits together. Jeter flies into right, Nixon back. On the run, it's over his head. Jeter will dig for second and hold there with a double. Into center field, Damon will play it on a hop. Jeter will come to the plate. It's a two-run game. Ripped into the right field corner fair. Bernie Williams will dig. It's a ground rule double. It's second and third. Pedro, you know, had really had a ton of success in his career against Jorge. Neither guy sort of liked each other, and they had uh, been at each other several times during the course of the year and during the course of their careers. Pedro pitching to me tough inside all day, and I was looking for a pitch inside. Turn on and hit to shallow center field. It is a big up. One run scores, Bernie. Here's Matt Sully. He scores. Postella goes to second with a double. It is a two-run double by Postella. And the Yankees have come all the way back to tie the game at five in one of the greatest comebacks you'll ever see. Nobody at second base, and I was able to sneak into second base with a double. I probably swung at a ball, but I got lucky. At that point, you're like, oh my gosh, this thing is tied. And it happened like that at some point. Talk about a spark in the ball club right there. I mean, this just gives you new life. Everyone's excited. I thought the stadium was going to fall down when Jorge Posada blue double and created this amazing comeback. Now, that was unbelievable that, because that was the culmination of, oh my gosh, it's a brand new game now. It's a thrilling moment for Posada to be able to do that, especially in a playoff game like that with the situation, our backs to the wall. He come through in a, in a big way. To see that outpouring of emotion of, of Posada at second base was pretty awesome. <laughs> The place was going bonkers. So now this game goes into extra innings, and I'm looking at the I mean, it past midnight. It had been a crazy game already. Pedro Martinez, Grady Little, everything else that happened in that game. From our standpoint, Mariano being in the game, he was dealing. And as good as the Red Sox offense was, you got the feeling like he was in complete command that night, control. And we knew it was just a matter of how long can we keep him in this game. We got to do something. 
Joe said that he was done for sure after that inning, but I have a hard time believing that he wouldn't have been back out there for a fourth should we have not scored. One and two, two out top of the 11th, tied at five. Here's a pitch from Moe, swing, Adamant! Struck him out! Strikes out two of the three hitters he faces in the 11th. I hadn't had much success off of Tim, but I remember, you know, knowing I was leading off the inning, so when the inning ended, running off the field, feeling like I was going to do something. And when I was on deck, I was considering taking a pitch. And as I was walking up to home plate, I, I just said, just get a good pitch to hit. Don't overthink this. Turned out to be the first pitch. Got a pretty good piece of it. His first at bat of the game. There's a fly ball deep to left. It's on its way. There it goes. And the Yankees are going to the World Series. Aaron Boone has hit a home run. The Yankees go to the World Series for the 39th time in the remarkable hit. Boone had been having as bad a postseason as you could possibly have. He was the last guy you'd think would get up there and hit a home run. Wakefield had been very tough on us throughout the year, and all of a sudden, uh, there's the ball going to the left field seats. It was a shocker. I remember two things. I remember looking up to see that ball travel, and I said, that ball's out of here. And then I remember looking at the mound to watch Tim Wakefield, and he had looked out to left field, and then he had looked down. So I said, yes, what I saw was right, because this ball is out of here. <laughs> to this day, I clearly remember seeing that ball going into the stands very clearly. You just saw another one of those typical celebrations at Yankee Stadium. It was almost like one continuous sound throughout the stadium for what seemed like an eternity. When it disappeared into those seats in that late evening, it absolutely electrified all of us. Boone with the ability to just dance around the bases and put himself next to the likes of Bucky Dent with that home run. It's a very foggy memory in my mind. You know, there's, there's moments in your life that you can recall kind of photographically. That, that's not one of them for me. I learn more from watching people's reaction from the video of it. That, there's about a 30 minute period in there where it's just, it's not something I recall vividly. With one swing, the man became part of Yankee lore forever, and he'll be invited every old timer's day for the rest of his life. Aaron Boone able to be another part of Yankee history that very few players have been able to be a part of. A friend of mine who was uh, my colleague at the Hartford Current, Dom Amore, wrote a terrific uh, lead for the fans in Connecticut saying, okay, now you have your Bucky Dent to hate. It was just one of those games where I just remember that I was so, so happy, so excited when we won. I tell you, it was uh, as exciting a moment as I've ever had. One of the most gratifying things I've ever witnessed. It'd be one of those games where you just, you, you'll never forget about Within one swing of the bat off of Tim Wakefield, all was right in Yankee land. Derek would used to say, you know, even during the regular season, he's like, the ghosts will show up occasionally during the regular season, but in the postseason, they're, they're definitely out. It certainly made you think, think of it there. Amazed at how many people that I come across you know, across the country that have a story attached to that moment, whether it was a good moment for them or a terrible moment for them. It was something that people have a real strong story to and share it with me often. It's uh, something I appreciate.